So Russell, you're the reason why I wanted to get on Survivor. Back when I watched Survivor Samoa season 19, I fell in love with the game. I loved how ruthless you played, how great you played. Uh, I just fell in love with the game and I thought one day I'm going to get on Survivor. So I want to thank you yeah. for introducing well, me to the game. But so, it's an honor for you to be here. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, I'm glad to be here. So uh, I think I hear that most of the time that uh, back in those days, uh, season 19, earlier than that, you know, they had such great seasons. I even loved Gabon. I don't know if you watched Gabon. I did. Uh, Token change with Coach. Yep. I mean, they're just great seasons. And uh, I hear a lot of people tell me more than anything, more than you should have won. Mm -hmm. uh, they tell me uh, you're the reason I started watching Survivor again. So it's, you know, now we have uh, the new 40s. Uh, the you know what? Hold on. Just stay right there. We're going to jump into season 40. But okay. to your point, you're exactly right. I mean, you really don't have Survivor seasons like yours anymore, uh, like Token Chains. You really don't. There's a lot of people afraid to make moves, especially because you, you ripped the game open and you showed how you can play ruthless, really, and smart and strategically and get all the way to the end and in my opinion, you should have won as well, but that is the game of Survivor. You know, it's also a people game as mm -hmm. well, you know? And so, but I have a question. I know you owned an oil company at the time. Do you think that you played so ruthless and, and I should say strategically and you didn't give a rip because you had money and you didn't really care if you were out? How did you come up with your strategy before you got out there or, or did you come up with it or did you make it up as you're on the island? Yeah, that's a good point. Because nobody's ever brought that point to me before. Before Russell answers, want to say a quick thank you to the sponsor of this video. Noble Gold Investments is pleased to let you know that gold is the best performing asset for 2022. According to longtermtrends.net, gold has actually outperformed the S&P 500, the Dow, and Bitcoin for 2022. So what are you waiting for? Open a gold IRA or silver IRA with Noble Gold Investments this month and receive a free one quarter ounce American gold eagle coin with every qualifying IRA. Find out more at noblegoldinvestments.com. Again, that's noblegoldinvestments.com. Because nobody's ever brought that point to me before. Like, did you play ruthless because you already had money and it didn't really matter? But uh, I wanted the title, the title of Soul Survivor, especially after I played so hard. You know, when you play, when you give your all in something, mm -hmm. we see professional athletes all the time give their all in championship games, and we see the losers crying at the end of the game. That's because they give their heart and soul into that game. Right. And uh, and once I started playing, mm -hmm. that was it. I wanted to uh, fully take control. I wanted to to manipulate everyone, manipulate their mind. I remember when I got off of season 19, I was so strategic in that game. The uh, As you know, uh, you talk to a psychiatrist before and after, during, whenever you need to, when you play Survivor. And uh, after I played season 19, she told me, Russell, they're going to write books about what you just did. <laughs> because all I was doing out there was manipulate, trying to... I would say my whole strategy was if I can control the way they feel, I can control the way they think. Mm -hmm. So when I played that hard, it was all about winning. It, it, I didn't care about the money at that time. Uh, maybe it gave me a slight advantage because mm -hmm. uh, I didn't need the money. Mm -hmm. it, that would it definitely give you an advantage because you don't have to worry about, okay, I got to win because I, you know, I just want the money. So I need to be more careful. I didn't worry about that. And I went straight forward like a bullet. Yeah, uh, it's, it's definitely an advantage. I remember when I used to play poker, one of the tip, the best tips I got from mm -hmm. a professional poker player was if you are worried about the money, when you sit down at a cash game poker table, you should not be sitting there. Because right. in your mind, that money is gone, that you're all in, shouldn't even think about the money. You're playing a strategic game. You make the moves you need to make in order to make it to the end. Yeah. And I've always said this too, survivor and poker and life, it's very similar. There's a beginning game, middle game, end game. It's 
very much adjusting to people, reading people, you know, discerning people and all of that. Obviously now I'm a Christian. So my life is like drastically uh, changed as well from my interest in poker and survivor, but it's, it, it's, it's interesting. So yeah, I mean, you definitely, okay. So you, you um, went in there. I just want the title soul survivor. Do right. you have any regrets at all looking back on any of your seasons that you maybe would have done differently? The uh, first time I played the game, I was, I, I like to say that everything I did, I didn't do anything vindictive. I did everything strategic except for one thing. Throwing and, the sauce in the fire. <laughs> well, no, that was strategic because I wanted to control the way they felt. Okay. So by, by my, me doing that, it caused chaos around the camp. And I was just being quiet while everybody else is arguing. Where's my socks? And where's who? We don't have any water. Now we need to boil more water. What happened? So, uh, you know, they're fighting mm -hmm. because I controlled the fight. So all that was perfect. Uh, it's shocking to me that people don't. Everybody looks for clues without idols nowadays. I did that. I yeah. created a monster. You but did. no one nowadays, especially in 40s, uh, tries to create chaos to to further them in the game, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, it's very politically thing, correct, as you know. Right. Yeah. The one thing I do regret, only because when I got home, my immediate family was like, uh, my mom, she has three sisters, and they all graduated from college. Everyone, my grandfather, greatest man in the world, fought in World War Two. Prisoner of War, the Patan Death March for three and a half years. Uh, they was like, you shouldn't have did that to the, you shouldn't have called those girls dumb. So, mm -hmm. and that was vindictive. Me saying my dumb, dumb ass girl blind. alliance. Yeah, the dumb blonde alliance. Yeah, that was a little, you know, the re only reason I did that because I was forced into it. They wanted more from me. Production was like, give us more, give us more. So, mm -hmm. I would have never, I'm not the kind of guy that does that. I have three daughters. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't have never done that. But I'm I gonna... knew they needed more from me and I gave them what they wanted. That's the only thing I regret in all the time I played. You know, and Russell has a point because this is something that we don't really talk about um, production. Uh, we actually signed a contract not to talk about it for, I think it was like five or three years or three or five years and we're Obviously, that that expired. Well, I'll talk about it a little bit. I'm glad you brought that up because it's so true. You know, something that you don't see and you don't hear about is that there it was production um, that kind of, you know, sometimes pin you against each other, sometimes want to egg you on to say something that's maybe salacious or something that's going to shock people or some kind of soundbite that they can use for the next episodes to get you to watch it. Uh, Survivor, I think, is a great game in itself. A great experiment in itself, psychological experiment. You don't really need to do that. I mean, I've been there, Russ, because I remember in in a before the show started. You know how we do those interviews by the beach, and you know, just like pre pre um, yeah pre pre game interview. Yeah, yeah. Right. And they were egging me on. They were like, "Well, did you know? Did you ever use your looks in poker to have you know mm -hmm. use use an advantage?" And I said, "Honestly, not really. I just I I, I don't want even wear makeup. I just would put my hoodie on, put my glasses on. I would play and." And they were like, well, okay, but they kept asking me and asking me and asking me and asking me to the point where I said something that I regretted, which right. was the first tip soundbite that I gave on the show and the first, and they used it in the first five minutes of the uh, trailer. And I was mortified. I was hysterically crying. They actually put two sentences together. And I said something like, oh yeah, if, if I see a guy at the table, I might push up my my boobs oh, up on the fire. Oh, and I was yeah. mortified. They literally glued a few sentences together. I don't even remember saying that, but they they will sometimes push you to say something. I'm like, oh, got it. Okay, next question. So this is true. Right. But I, I say this as well. Survivor, out of everyone that asks me, they're fans all the time, is it real? Is it real? Is it reality? Is it real? Or is it, right. is it fake? Is it scripted? Mm -hmm. In my perspective, it was totally, totally real. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. with you, Russ, you went all the way to the end. I went almost halfway, so I didn't it's see. It's super real. Yeah, it's, it's crazy super... real. And and we would be the ones that would say it was fake if it was fake. I yeah. played an Australian survivor, way different. They they baby them over there. They give them bottled water. They give them fruits before challenges. They baby them. Mm, American survivor is real. Yeah. Yeah, it is crazy. It's hard, hard. The game is super hard. It is. Uh, my season, three people, 
got medically evacuated. Two people almost died, specifically, you know, Caleb. He went down. I mean, I spoke to him after the game, and he said, Anna, my liver and my kidney was failing. Yeah, that's crazy. Because it was so hot in Cambodia where we were, 120 degrees, running around, digging through sand for four hours. And that's hard. When you start digging, people don't Ooh. realize how hard that really is. They're like, oh, all they're doing is digging through sand. Yeah. It is like It is like picking up weights every time mm -hmm. you move the sand. And, mm -hmm. and it's super hot. It's, super it's, hot. No yeah, water. It's crazy. No water. No no water breaks, you guys. I mean, they weren't even taking... We didn't even have... We had a tiny bit of water, and that canteen barely holds any water. Maybe holds maybe half a cup of and water. And it's hot. It's hot. Right. <laughs> and he's a big guy. He's from the military. Um. So what are your thoughts on... Let's jump into the updates on Survivor. What are your thoughts on all the updates? Can't say, hey, guys, and all this other stuff. Yeah. What, what are your thoughts? Well, first of all, what I hate the worst is the 20, uh, they, they, what is it, 26 days, 27 days now? No. They don't do 39 days any longer. Uh, that isn't, that's not Survivor anymore. Now mm. it's getting easier. Now, mm. we, they're baby, like I said, they baby Australian Survivor. Now, American Survivor is starting to get babied by 26 days. When you see these Survivors come on TV and say, this is the hardest Survivor ever, we, they literally were saying that in season 41. This is the hardest survivor. I'm like, think about what you just did and add another two weeks. Then come talk to me. So, uh, and then the the whole point with the come, come on in guys and all that, I think that they didn't even have to do that. Jeff didn't have to do that. If he wanted to change it, he could have changed it. He didn't have to come on there and make it public and say, hey, look at me. And what I'm about to say, yeah. does, does this offend you? Everyone said, no, it doesn't. He could have moved on from it. Mm -hmm. But then we had a guy that was like, I did a video on my YouTube channel, the Russell Hunt show that shows these people after Jeff said, don't come, come on in guys. All of them during the show saying the word guys, we use the word on my show. Mm -hmm. I say, what's happening guys. You think for you know, I have a YouTube channel. So you think that I'm trying to only talk to men? Do you think that I, that's all I want to talk to? I don't want, I don't want the, uh, uh, the numbers of women watching my show. That's just idiotic. And guys is a universal thing. We've used it forever. Come on in guys. Uh, what's happening guys. Come on guys. Let's get it together. I mean, that's, it's a it's a universal thing, yeah. and I think that Jeff was trying to appease the woke community, and uh, I, he thinks if he still thinks that he's crazy, but I think that he really thinks that that's what people want. When yeah. you look at the numbers, and all they're doing is dropping. So if that's what they really want, if you're looking at the numbers, then they're down. They got down to three, a little above three million views. That's that's a cable network television show, right? That's like CNN. I mean, you're, you're right about that. I mean, you're totally right about that. And the thing is, the problem is, is that the media and you have all these liberal TV shows that project their own ideas and thoughts and very liberal lefty views. Meanwhile, the majority of the country. Are independent conservative yeah. they don't want to hear politics yeah, so, when they're so turning on tv you're definitely more into politics than me so i have a question for you sure. what i mean how jeff's not a stupid guy very smart guy yeah how does he because he's only doing it because he thinks it's helping he thinks it helps so how does he think that well, let me let me throw it back to you real quick. Do you think it's him? That, I mean, obviously, we know Jeff makes a lot of decisions on Survivor. Or do you think it's the executives in the? They um, had they sat down at a table, and and decided to ask them about the come on in guys thing. They sat down. That wasn't just Jeff going like that. Mm -hmm. And they all agreed. Maybe we should. Because he that wasn't just that didn't just happen like that. Sure, a hundred percent. We we know that it, it, there's executives involved. You know, when we get interviewed to get casted, we don't just interview with you know Mark Burnett or Jeff. It's with the executives of CBS. Well, Mark's you know? not involved any longer with Survivor. Yeah, that's a big problem. Agree. Because Mark we see that that's a big problem. 
Yes. Lynn Spillman is not involved with Survivor. That's another big problem. And who's Lynn Spillman for those that don't know who she is? She's the casting director, maybe the best casting director in, in the world. Yeah. With TV shows. Amazing. Easy. Easy. Cause mm-hmm. look who she look what she she was hard, hard. I don't did you go through Lynn? I did. I love Lynn. You, you I was see how hard she was to get through though. She wasn't easy. Uh-huh. She she would sit there and she would ream you. She yeah. would she would say things that were that would piss you off. Yeah, that, to see that, how you would react. She's yeah, brilliant. I, I remember sitting there. She was on her phone acting like she wasn't interested at all. And it was it was a mind game. Oh, she was like this. She was like this. She was on the phone. She goes, "Oh, Anna, you're a professional poker player." Oh. I interviewed two two professional uh-huh. poker players. I've never heard of you before. Why should you be on the show? And I was like, and you know, some people would be offended and upset yeah. and, and shut down. But I was like, oh, actually, those two players you just mentioned, I was literally just at a Zoom call with them. We're we're talking about doing a show together. Mm-hmm. We were at the time. So right. um, I said, you may not know me because I mostly play cash games, online games. I'm not like I don't care to be on ESPN and on on these poker channels. I don't care. I just want to play the game. And so how come I, you don't play poker? Do you think that that's wrong for you, Christianity? I mean, I I really don't think so. I'm a, a Christian question. as well. No, I don't think there's anything wrong with the game theory of poker. I don't think there's anything wrong with just playing around with your friends. Not it wasn't it wasn't like I decided. Oh, I'm not going to play anymore. No, it was actually Russell really supernatural because I filmed Survivor in 2015. I got back home and one morning I just, my, my, I, I didn't realize I was like addicted and awake. I was really oh, addicted was, to, yeah, to not yeah. just poker survivor. One morning, Russ, I woke up. I didn't want to play poker anymore. And I didn't want to watch survivor or study the game. I, I mean, I just played it. So that, you know, dream was checked. That box was checked, but I just didn't want to play. So it was completely supernatural. I, it wasn't yeah. like I made a conscious decision. I don't think there's anything wrong with playing. I think, you know, I think definitely like, I, don't, I never called it gambling, but where you're playing in a cash game and you're like greedy and you and you covet their money and there's sin in there for sure. Right. Oh yes. I think playing a tournament. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Um, I think that I think in poker, uh, especially when you get to the level of professional, they're professionals. That's it's their job. You know, it's what they do. So, uh, but I see what you're saying, and you you have to if you feel a certain way then you have to uh, go ahead and go with that because you yeah. can't, you cannot, uh, if you feel like that, then you can't play. Yeah, I was you know? done. I, I didn't want to play. And my friends were like, what do you mean? You've been studying for so many years. I'm like, no, I don't want to play anymore. But you're right. You know, it's a skill and everyone has a different skill. And being a professional player, I mean, it's, it's definitely a skill to it. Um, let me ask you, speaking of politics and being conservative in this world that's very very liberal first of all for me in the poker world very very liberal player socialist and all that and also in the survivor community how how has it been being uh very outspoken on twitter you and yes. i are the only ones that are outspoken although yeah, you don't see many you don't see many survivors do that because i think uh, a lot of i talk to a lot of people a mm-hmm. lot of people that's that believes like i do but they don't tweet anything they do. And, and I think that that's because they want to play again. Mm, that makes sense. So yeah, I have I have a lot of people, too, in my DMs saying, oh, thank you for tweeting that. Thank you for saying that. A ton that will never say. That makes sense. They want to play again. Yeah. So speaking of play again, would you ever want to play again? Uh, the only way I'll play again is if they pay me. They have to pay me a good amount. Uh, nothing outrageous or crazy. Just something that... Uh, shows that you respect me everything i've done for the game i would play again but uh if i'm gonna play i'm gonna get paid so mm-hmm. that's and i don't think they will pay me because they just it's so different now mm-hmm. so so i wouldn't play for free that makes sense yeah i mean for you really you really took the game of survivor to another level and it has never been the same again and there's seasons i've watched and I thought, oh man, this is, it's got, it's just so boring. I mean, there's a little bit of moves, but it's boring. Yeah, People no. kind of just ponytail. I think it has a lot to do with nowadays, this is how they cast. They come in there. Let's say it's a black gentleman that comes in there. He has dreads on, right? Mm-hmm. Check, check the box. Uh, do you believe in gay rights? Yeah, oh, of course. Check, you play him. And so it, <laughs> that, I think that, I, I say this a lot, and I, I swear to you, I could do this. I can go in a square mile of the town I live in and find 
20 people that could play the game better than mm -hmm. all the 40s. Wow. From 41, 42, 43. All it is now is being woke and checking a box and making sure mm -hmm. that they're now you can they want to be what is uh diverse. That's fine. That's mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. But get good characters. Like don't just check a box when they walk in the room. Like mm -hmm. somebody else is gonna come along, get people that actually want to play the game. Jeff said publicly in an interview, I don't know where it is. I was told this. I didn't hear it. Someone told me that uh, uh, several people told me he said that he does not want to cast villains anymore. How so is everyone that? wins a trophy. So it's like everyone wins a trophy situation. Yeah. 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 You don't want to have, you don't want to put people in a difficult situation. You I hate when I see everybody happy. <laughs> what happened to the Koreans of Survivor? When you lose the game and your speech cuts you like a knife, like what mm -hmm. happened to those players? They yeah. got some players that played before that's super liberal, like mm -hmm. uh, uh, Corinne's friend that played Amazing Race went, ran for Gov for uh, in New York. She ran for mm -hmm. Eliza. Yes, Eliza. She's a great player. Mm -hmm. So just because you're liberal doesn't mean that you can't play the game or totally. or be a be a character in the game of Survivor, at least. Yeah, I mean, listen, you can be left-leaning or right-leaning and play the game. There's nothing wrong with having your politics and playing your game, but it's something wrong when all you do is push it and talk about it and, and try to, you yeah. know, virtue signal the whole game. It is boring. It is boring. We don't want to see it. I, I, I don't want to turn on my, my TV and watch political stuff. I don't. Yeah. Even though no. I'm a politically. I don't want to see it. And I they really that. wouldn't. I said that on a uh, after forty one when they did come on in guys. I I ranted about uh, if I, look. I watch both. I watch Fox. I watch CNN. I watch them all because I want to see everything. I want to see what everybody's talking about. But I, I do that because I want to watch news. When I want to watch news, when I watch Survivor, I don't want to watch anything political. I want to watch Survivor. Right. I want to people see people get stabbed in the back. I want to see, uh, that's the interesting stuff. When you hate someone, you tune in. You tune in because you hate them. So now everybody's likable. Everybody there is super likable. And no one uh, you know, wants to uh, do anything that's going to make them unlikable outside the game. Even the people that stab people in the back. Jesse, last season, you probably didn't watch it. He was the biggest villain there. He stabbed one of his best friends in the back, but then he's still likable because he was so hurt. I'm like, I'd be like, it's the game, brother. It's the game. I I don't regret what I did. I yeah. voted you out, you out, you out, you out because I controlled this game. But mm -hmm. they don't do that no more. Yeah, obviously for me, like if I would play again, which to be honest with you, I wouldn't if they invited me to play. I, I would say no. Even though I want to, I would say no because right. of all the politics and the hatred because I'm an open Christian conservative, you know, Trump supporter. They may do a Democrat versus Republican. So I, I was just going to say, I miss those old seasons where it was, where it was women against men. It was different nationalities against different nationalities. It was so interesting because it really was a psychological experiment. And it's so fun to watch and, and see people interact and see people uh, see how they react in situations and deal with one another. And, and it was such a fun game. Yeah. And it really turned into something that is just. I don't know what's happening now. It's a, it's so uh, like I used to be excited. I have a whole channel that talks about Survivor. So, you know, I, I'm excited. I want to talk about it. But it's so hard for me. I do a player's performance and the mm -hmm. Russell crowd every week and it's so hard for me to actually do it it's uh frustrating it really is for me it's frustrating because i want the game to be and i'm sure you do too i want the game it's one of the greatest games ever invented and i want it to work but mm -hmm. they're they're flushing it down the toilet yeah, it's definitely a missed opportunity. They've, they, I think that they've gotten confident that they have so much success the past what since two thousand, and they, they think they think they can just ride it. People will watch it anyway. No, like you said, the numbers show that Americans are not interested. Let me ask you a question: 
I, I would love for you to share if there's if there's some things that we don't know publicly, some things that you've seen or happened or some behind the scenes stuff that or some crazy stories from Survivor that maybe you haven't shared publicly that the fans would want to hear. Well, uh, like we go back to production and how production controls the game. Uh, when I I did not want to bring poverty with me to the end of the game. Mm. Uh, matter of fact, she was not coming at the end with me. I kept saying no. I got in an argument with production, uh, and they said the same thing is going to happen to you this season that happened to you in season nineteen. In other words, you're going to lose to the girl. And I was like, and I didn't know I didn't win, so I was like, wait, are you saying I didn't win season nineteen? Because I played back to back two weeks. Oh, that's I was right. Only two weeks off. Yeah, here is the So the cameraman was telling me they would say. Uh, I don't know if you can, uh, I don't know if you can beat Jerry and the cameraman would be, or they would say, she would say something like, uh, I think you might have a better shot to, against poverty, poverty. And the cameraman would be like, and I'm like, I was so confused. Cause I played back to back. This was the end of the last season. My mind was mush. Mm. Uh, so I was like, am I about to lose? to jerry like is that what's about to happen because they're telling me and i would have absolutely would have lost to jerry mm -hmm. so i think that they were trying to help me uh because poverty was a better uh, jerry to won 100 she would have got all the votes now i know that but uh poverty was my only shot because she did everything i told her to do and everything was like uh they 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 tried to act like it was a, a who was that that said it was like a a bad relationship where the woman keeps getting beat and you stay in the relationship that's how they mm -hmm. define me and poverty's relationship nowadays if they did that it'd be it'd be if i'd play nowadays and they would define the relationship like that i'd be hated you'd be canceled <laughs> oh yeah for sure but yeah. back then you could do stuff like that yeah, and it was season 20, Heroes vs. Villains, one of the, in my opinion, one of the best seasons of Survivor. Samoa, honestly, and, and season 20. It was really, really, really good. And we, yeah. like you said, we don't see, we can't see that anymore, unfortunately. That's what makes the game boring. It's become so political. They could fix it. I just don't know. Think that, I think that they're, uh, they're, it's almost when you go too far, you don't want to turn back. It's almost, I, I don't think that they will because they have too much pride. I mean... I don't know. Well, you brought up a good point where there is there's a game you're playing, but there's also the mind game you're playing with production. Mm. Because here's the reality of it. You have sometimes 18 players, sometimes 20 players playing this reality show game. And the way that they cast people, they cast basically different, even though they're we're, we're people and it's a reality show, they are casting certain characters. So they'll have, you know, they'll have like the nerdy girl or the pretty girl. They'll have like a nerdy guy and, and like a jock guy. They'll have like older, younger. Uh, so they'll have all these different characters because they want America to identify with someone and That's root right. someone on. And it's a brilliant game. It's a brilliant idea that you have the whole country having their player. It's like it's like a little chess match and you're watching your player go through the field or football. And so you, you're rooting them on. And so when you have people that are all similar with the same ideology and the same kind and even, honestly, in my opinion, when they have like Christians on, they have these Christians on who are not even they're they're like super religious and they say right. the dumbest things. It makes Christians look stupid. And, and I'm just like, oh my right. goodness, seriously, this is who you cast to represent the Christian community. You know, right. someone with like no integrity and someone who's like, really? I mean, it's a game that honestly, most Christians, if you play a Christian game, you'll never make it to the end because there is backstabbing. <laughs> you, have right. to, you have to lie and manipulate and it's part of the game, which is why I think another reason why I wouldn't play it again. But it's a fun game to observe and realize, hey, they're playing for the title, they're playing for the money um to close out how does it how do you feel with um you know being again in such a liberal community do you still get a lot of backlash and hate and and all of that from your fans because i know i see your twitter yeah and you have conservative views and you but you have these diehard fans that love you so much and they don't they they don't agree with you politically but they yeah. love you as who you are and what you did in the game it's crazy because on twitter i even said uh happy january 6th so 
<laughs> so, but I don't like even my uh, liberal friends, they stay following me. Uh, I think that I'm at the point to where they know that I will say what I want to say. And that's just all there is mm -hmm. to it. Uh, I love everyone. I don't want to disrespect anyone, but uh, I do have my beliefs and I'm, and I stick to those. And when I want to talk about it, I talk about it. And uh, I think that sometimes I get a little bit of backlash, but not much at all. From mm -hmm. the stuff that I tweet, I would think that I would get a lot more like happy January 6th. You think that's a death sentence, but, uh, was, was that a real tweet or are you trolling them? Cause I'm, I'm trolling. I'm trolling all the time. You know, I, I think I like this. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, so it's, it's fun to watch them it. get mad, right. Get mad at me and say certain things and just pissed off and, you know, so, a bunch yeah. of, I, I like to do that thing. Uh, those, and I think that's a lot that a lot of people actually realize, especially my friends on the left. So, uh, I don't, you know, cause no one in their right mind would say happy January 6th, right. unless you're trolling, unless you're trolling. Right. People. No, I'm absolutely <laughs> trolling. And then I had a friend of mine that came back and said, yes, uh, Mardi Gras is coming. And then I'm like, yep. A happy January 6th. Cause crawfish season is here. So, <laughs> So we have a lot of good things over here in the South that happens in the end of January or January and February. So, mm -hmm. uh, yes, it was absolutely trolling. I disagree what they did in January 6th. I understand some of the people that were actually there. I could have actually been there. That's it. That's the crazy thing about that whole thing. That whole mm -hmm. thing. You yeah. could have actually been there and all of a sudden you're in prison. Totally. I, and, and, and in fact, I was there. I was at the ellipse oh, where Trump was, was giving the speech. I was oh. there. I didn't even I didn't go to the Capitol. We after right. we heard his speech, we were walking down Constitutional Avenue. I had friends that flew in and we were just evangelizing. We had speaker systems walking down Constitutional Avenue and just preaching Jesus, the gospel. Mm -hmm. And we got to the Capitol. We were standing about, I don't know, maybe like 40, 50 yards from the Capitol and people are running by bleeding and people. There, there was a stampede. Oh, right, I mean, there were people that were almost died just being stepped on. Wow. And I was like, what is this? And I could have easily got a knock on the door from, you know, the FBI because I had friends that weren't even there sure. that got a knock on the door from the FBI because they're open politically, uh, you know, publicly. They talk their mind and here they are, people, fans trolling them and saying, oh, they were there when they weren't there. And you had yeah, knocks on the door. I didn't have a knock on my door, thank God. But, you know, I, I wasn't far. But obviously, the day was the most one of the most beautiful days ever. It was so many people. It was so amazing. But obviously, it's unfortunate what happened at the Capitol. That right. that was totally stupid and weird at the same time that all the doors were open to let them in. I mean, anyway, yeah, I'm not yeah, going to yeah. go down that route. But um, but but Russell, it was so good to chat with you. I, I hope you're going to come back because. Um, I know you do takes on Survivor, mm -hmm. and um, and actually, why don't you give a quick tip? I know we talked about this before, how to get casted a bit, but do you have any tips for anyone that wants That's to get hard. casted? It's very hard these days. Uh, it's very, very hard to get. Mm -hmm. I don't even know because uh, I had a buddy of mine. I'm not going to say his name because I don't want to blow blow him up, but he's semi-famous and uh, he, he might get on the, the show, so I don't want to ruin that. But his video was outstanding. And I know when I see a good video, I know, and I mm -hmm. get it straight to the top. I get it to Caitlin. So mm -hmm. I get it right, right to where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, no callback. And I was shocked. And I realized that you need a story because now they do backstories and all that stuff. You need to be somewhat diverse. So the white, straight, young male, very hard to get casted you need something something mm -hmm. so uh it's just how it is now so if yeah. you ask me how to get on the show these days come up with a fake story uh that makes people cry get on the show and then say it's fake once you get on the show <laughs> don't tell nobody <laughs> until you own because if you tell them they'll probably take you off but that's the only thing you can do i, I you know that i can see Russ, would you ever play a game like Amazing Race if they asked you to, or is oh, it only yeah. Survivor? Yeah, I always wanted to play Amazing Race. I think that would be super fun because you can't get voted off. So That's we right. can, we, it could be like the uh, two conservatives, me and you play. Hey, CBS, I would, I would do it with you. Do you know how to drive stick? Because I don't yes. know how to drive stick. Okay, perfect. We can play. Can <laughs> I'm you? In. 
Can you uh, speak any other languages? I speak Russian. I understand Ita a bit of Italian and Spanish. You speak as well. Russian fluently? Fluently, yeah, Guru Paruski. Maybe we can go to Russia. Maybe they'll have. No, they ain't going to have nothing in Russian. No, they're not. So, not, not right, right now. Right. <laughs> not right, right now. But hey, Russ, it was so great to chat with you. Thank you for coming on. And how can people reach you if they want to email you or ask you questions or you know, reach out to you? Well, you can follow me on uh, the Russell Hant Show uh, or. Um, I started another YouTube channel called Enhanced Reality, E-N-H-A-N-T-Z-E-D, Enhanced mm. Reality, because I know Survivor is about to be over and I like to travel. So uh, I, I went to Thailand for two months with my son and we stayed there uh, and I did a lot of the stuff on the Russell Hent Show. So I'm mm. trying to convert the Russell Hent Show to more of a fun channel to where I, a lot of the things that happens in my life I do. An enhanced reality will be the reality world stuff awesome. because it's about to end. So I was about to be over. So maybe if we get a shot on, uh, on amazing race, then that would be fun though. That would be fun. I would do it. So you Caitlin think we could win? Me. You got to be somewhat I aggressive. We can win. And, and I think that me and you are aggressive enough to, yeah. I will push somebody out. The, I will grab them and take them out the cab and, Ladies first, and then I get in after you. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, I didn't do anything. I'm just a buy, but I'm going to be computer right. Computer right next to you. Right. <laughs> right. Well, it's been awesome. God bless you. And uh, well, we'll see you next time.